my name is Karen and I am a Brazilian living in the United States. If you click it on this video, welcome! Today I'm going to teach you how to use the color wheel and how to mix and match different color combinations. So if you want to learn more, stay here with me. I think it is pretty much impossible to talk about the color wheel without mentioning Isaac Newton. And that's because Isaac Newton was the creator of the color wheel. He created the color wheel between the years of 1665 and 1666. So Isaac Newton is famous not only for the creation of the color wheel, but also for the theories of gravity, motion, and light. While he was studying white light reflections of prisms, he noticed that the light reflected a spectrum of colors. He believed that the different colors had a harmonious relationship between them, and he even identified each different color with a corresponding musical note, arranged all those musical notes into squares, and then he finally placed colors into a rotating disk that now we call the color wheel. One of the first things that we can note in this color wheel is that it has 12 different colors. These 12 colors are divided between warm colors and cool colors. So if we take a look at this wheel, we have all the 12 colors right here surrounding the wheel and half of the wheel is about the warm colors and the other half we have all the cool colors. So when we talk about, for example, the half of the wheel that has all the warm colors, we are going to see that we have among the warm colors all the shades of red, all the shades of orange, and all the shades of yellow here. And on the other half of the wheel, we are going to have all the cool colors. So among all the cool colors, we are going to have all the shades of blue, all the shades of green, and all the shades of purples here. All the colors we see on the color wheel are separated by primary colors, secondary colors, and tertiary colors. The primary colors are three, the secondary colors are three more, and the tertiary colors are the other six colors on the wheel. Let's start talking about the primary colors now. The primary colors have this name because we cannot mix any other colors in order to create them. They are not created out of any other color. And the primary colors are blue, red, and yellow. Now let's talk about the secondary colors. The secondary colors are created by mixing two of those primary colors together. So the secondary colors are green, orange, and violet. In order to make the color green, <laughs> for example, we need to mix yellow plus blue. Uh, the orange color to be created, we need to mix red and yellow. And the violet color needs to have blue and red in order to be created. So every time we take two of the primary colors, we are able to create a secondary colors once we mix them. Now let's talk a little bit about the tertiary colors. The tertiary colors are created adding one primary color and one secondary color. So the tertiary colors are blue-green, blue-violet, red-orange, red-violet, yellow-green, and yellow-orange. So blue, for example, is a primary color. When I add green, we have a blue-green color. And when we add violet instead, we have a blue 
violet color. Green and violet are secondary colors. So that's how the mixing happens. Every time we take one primary color and another secondary color, we create a tertiary color. Now that we have already talked a little bit about the primary, secondary, and tertiary colors, we're going to talk a little bit about color harmony. And what is color harmony? Color harmony is an arrangement of colors that go well together. In other words, they can be mixed and they're going to be harmonious together. In order to understand color harmony, there are a few things that I need to explain to you. And I'm going to show you this color wheel and we're going to turn it on the other way here. First of all, I need to explain to you what means the word hue. Hue means pure color. In other words, it means it's pure color. These are the colors that haven't been saturated and haven't been diluted with any other color. Here on the color wheel, we have 12 pure colors that were the ones we were talking about before. All these ones in this first row here of the color wheel. So these are called hues. Once I take any of these hue colors here and I add white to it, we're going to call it tint. For example, I have the color red here. Red is a hue because it's a pure color. It's a true color. But if I add a little bit of white to the red, we are going to have a tint. In this case, we have a pinkish color that we're going to call the tint. If instead of adding white, we add gray, for example, to this color red here, we are going to have the tone. And if instead of adding gray, we add black, we are going to have the shade. In this case here, it's like a burgundy color. And that happens in all the colors in the color wheel. I gave you an example of the red. Let's see what happens here with the color green, for example. Same thing. Here I have the hue, which is the pure color. And if I add white, I have the tint. If I add a little bit of gray, I have the tone. And if I add a little bit of black, I have the shade. <laughs> Now that we know that, we are going to talk about a little bit of about monochromatic colors, analogous, complementary, split complementary, triadic, and tetradic colors. Let's start by talking about the monochromatic colors. The monochromatic colors use tints, tones, and shades of one color. And the monochromatic colors are one of the most harmonious color combinations because all the colors belong to the same color family. There are several ways that we can style a monochromatic look, for example. We can use a single color because a single color is always going to maximize impact or we can take uh, different tints, shades, and tones of the same color. For example, if we think about the color red that you see right here on the color wheel, uh, we can wear, for example, a red outfit head to toe, and that's going to be a, a perfect monochromatic uh, outfit. But we could also, for example, wear the top part of the outfit red and the bottom could be pink, and that would be kind of a gradient effect monochromatic look. Or the vice versa, you know, could have a pink top with a red bottom outfit. <clears throat> so we can play with all these tints, tones, and shades in the same outfit or in the same image, and it's always going to look very harmonic because all these colors here belong to the same family. And that can happen with all the colors, all the 12 colors on the color wheel. We can take, for example, uh, different shades of yellow. Either use a single color of yellow 
or you store this, all these different diluted colors with gray, with white and with black, for example. Uh, I'll, I'll give you some examples. If we think about certain brands, we can, we can say that several brands, they do opt to this monochromatic look on the logo of their products or company. Some of the companies that I have selected here are, for example, Facebook. If we look at the Facebook logo, for example, we are going to see several different shades of blue. Uh, same thing happens when we look at the logo that Ford has. It has a little gradient effect with several different shades of blue. Another company that also does that is Starbucks. Starbucks has a totally monochromatic green logo to their company. And other companies that have a monochromatic look are the Animal Planet, and also the hotel's Holiday Inn, because their logo is a mixture of different shades of what? Of green. Well, the next one we're gonna talk about are the analogous colors. The analogous colors are colors located adjacent or next to each other on the color wheel. In other words, these are colors that are going to appear side by side on the color wheel. One example here that I'm going to show you are these colors. We have here the yellow, the yellow-orange, the orange, the red-orange, and the red. You see, here we have all these five colors that if they appear together in an outfit or in a painting or in a logo, they're always going to look very good together because they are very similar colors. They are side by side on this color wheel. In order for the analogous colors to look good on the color wheel, we need to have a minimum of two colors and we need to pick a maximum of five colors. And another tip is to avoid mixing the cool colors with the warm colors when we choose them on the color wheel. Try to pick colors that are side by side without mixing the cool with the warm colors. So let's see, for example, I, I have some examples here of companies that use it, the analogous colors on their logos. The first one is Subway. Well, Subway has its logo and it mixtured uh, three different colors. We have yellow, we have yellow green, and we have green on their logo. And the, the same color combination is used by the BP company. They also put yellow, yellow green, and green on their logo. Uh, other companies that also use the analogous color on the color wheel are MasterCard. And in MasterCard, we are going to see on their logo that they have the colors red, red-orange, and orange together. And if we look on the color wheel, we are going to realize that all these three colors are side by side on the color wheel. And another company that does that too, with even more colors together, is Instagram. If we take a look at the Instagram logo, we are going to see that they added several colors together. We have, first of all, we have violet, then we have red-violet, we have red, red-orange, and also orange. So we have a combination of five different colors on their logo. And they look pretty good together, as you can see right here. Now we are going to talk about the complementary colors. And the reason why they're called complementary colors is because they are colors which complement each other. And they complement each other because they are actually opposite colors on the color wheel. So they offer a huge contrast between them. I'll show you an example. So here I have a color wheel again and I have the color red, for example. If I put a straight line on the wheel with my finger on the other end, I'm gonna have the color green. So the color green and the color red, they are complementary colors. 
because they are on the opposite side of the color wheel. Another example, let's see here, the color, for example, I have the color purple here. So if I put a straight line between my finger to the wheel, in the end of the wheel we have what? We have yellow. So yellow and purple are complementary colors because they are on the opposite side of the color wheel. The best ratio for complementary colors is not 50 and 50%. That's usually too harsh on our eyes. So the best ratio would be either 70% of one color and 30% of the other, or even better, 80% of one color and 20% of the other color. One cool way to implement complementary colors uh, for us women is to wear accessories. For example, today I'm wearing this green top. So to complement that, I just added, you see, red earrings, a red necklace, and a reddish lipstick too. So it's easy. You don't need to leave your house like a crown or a Christmas tree, half green and half red. You can just put some little details. It can be as little as a ring or a bracelet, any jewelry or something on your hair it would look good too. So that's how, that's how we, we can do that. And it's gonna look really good if you trust this ratio of 80% and 20%. It's gonna look a lot better than 50-50. Well, I'll give you some examples now of some brands that make use of the complementary colors on their logo and also their products. Well, one of them, if you are a big fan of sports, you have probably heard of the Los Angeles Lakers. Well, the Los Angeles Lakers are a basketball team. And if you look on their uniform and their logo, you're gonna see a mixture of two colors, yellow and violet. So let's take a look here on the wheel. If we take a look, you see yellow is here. And we, if we push a straight line to the wheel, on the other end, we have what? we have the violet. So these two colors are complementary colors. They complement each other. They are opposite colors on the color wheel. And uh, this basketball team is making use of these colors. Another example is a football team called Ch Chicago Bears. And Chicago Bears has in their logo the colors blue and the color orange, same thing. If we take a look here on the color wheel, we have here the color blue, and if we put a straight line to it, you're gonna have its complementary color, which is orange. And we can see that not just in sports and companies, but also in nature too. Let's think about a red rose, for example. Which are the colors that we see in a red rose? If we look at the top of the flower, we're gonna have what? The red color. And then on the bottom, we're gonna have what? The green color. Same thing when we think about Christmas. What are the most traditional Christmas color? Red and green. And they look really good together. And that's why they're so famous for appearing connected in Christmas, for example. If we think now about a strawberry, for example, same thing happens. We are gonna have the red color with the green color. And even the ratio of nature is kind of perfect too, because if we look at the top of the strawberry, you're gonna see about 20% green and the other 80% is the fruit, which is red. So it's a good ratio too. And one brand that also uses the same colors is Krispy Kreme. Krispy Kreme, if you take a look at their logo, uh, you're also going to notice that they have the colors red and green together. So red and green, opposite colors on the color wheel. So they are complementary colors. Uh, another company that does exactly the same thing with the other colors is Best Buy. Best Buy has its logo in yellow-orange and blue-violet. 
So let's see here, yellow orange is here on the color wheel. And if we push a straight line down the wheel, we're gonna have what? The blue violet. So you see, again, they are opposite colors on the color wheel. And these are the colors used by Best Buy. So we can see that uh, this happens a lot, not just in nature, but in sports, in fashion, in all the kinds of things surrounding us all the time. Now we're gonna talk a little bit about the triadic colors. The triadic colors, as the name suggests, it comes from tri, so triangle, it comes from triangle. And when we think about triangle, what does it remind us? It reminds us about three different sides. So we are gonna have three different colors in the triadic uh, uh, shape, and they are all equally spaced. So they're gonna form like a perfect triangle, like I put this pink triangle here. So I'm gonna put this a little closer. If you take a look at this color wheel, for example, uh, let's take a look at the color red. So we have the color red in one side of the triangle. On the other one here, we have what? We have the color blue. And on the other one, we have the color yellow. So we have these three colors, red, blue, and yellow. If we think about the Superman, that's exactly the three colors that Superman has in his outfit. We have the red here on one part of the triangle, it's a perfect triangle. The other one is blue and the other one is yellow. So every time we think about the triadic, we're going to think about an equilateral triangle which is a triangle that has three equal parts in it, okay? Another example is the animal parrot, for example. If we think about a parrot, we're gonna see these three same colors together again. We have the red, we have the blue, and the yellow. And even companies use the same colors, like for example, the company Burger King. If we look at the Burger King logo, you're gonna see again red, blue, and yellow. Now we're gonna talk about the split complementary colors. If we take the color wheel here and we select a color, like for example here, I pick it the red-orange color. We are gonna put our finger and draw an imaginary light, uh, line down. But instead of picking this color here, we're gonna pick the color on the right and the color on the left of this color. So every time we do that, we are gonna find the other two split complementary colors. So the two split complementary colors of red orange, you see, I'm gonna take my finger straight down and then pick the color here is blue and the other color is green. So we have red orange, blue, and green, okay? Uh, one brand that uses exactly these colors on their logo is Fanta. If you take a look at the Fanta logo, you're gonna see that we have the red orange, the blue, and the green, okay? And the shape that you're gonna find in the color wheel for the split complementary colors is always gonna be a triangle too but differently from the previous one we have just seen now, the triangle shape is gonna be an isosceles shape. So it's this skinnier triangle that only has two sides of the triangle uh, which are the same, and one side here is different. So every time we pick a color, we draw our finger down, you're just gonna select the two colors be, uh, on, on each side of that color. Let's take another example here. Uh, like for example, let's see the color, I'll pick the blue-violet color here on the wheel. So we have here the blue-violet color. If I put my finger straight down, I just need to select the other two colors. In this case, we have yellow and orange. 
So the split complementary colors of blue-yellow are yellow and orange. And we can see these colors here on the Tide logo. If you take a look at the Tide logo, which colors do we see? We are going to see the blue-violet right here. And then in one side here, we're going to see the yellow and also the orange because they are split complementary colors and they look very good together. Another example of split complementary colors can be seen on this flower here. This flower has red violet color. If you put our finger straight down, you're just, you're just going to select these two colors here. So we have green in one side and the yellow. So we have red violet is a split complementary color to green and yellow. And all these three colors can be seen on the flower. So they can be easily found in nature too. If you start observing the colors of the flowers and nature in general around you, you can see a lot of split uh, color combinations. They are split complementary. Now we're going to talk about the tetradic color combination. When we talk about the tetradic color combination, we are always going to have four different colors. And these four colors can appear on the color wheel either in a square shape or in a rectangle shape. I'm going to give you some examples using the square shape. And the best ratio, again, is going to be about 80% of one color, which is going to be the dominant color, and about 20% of the other three colors, which are going to work as accent colors. So we, we shouldn't be splitting like these four colors, 25%, 25, 25, and 25. Some companies do that, and I will show you here some examples. But if you are wearing that, for example, the best ratio would be 80% of only one color and the small hints of the other three, because that's going to look again easier on the eyes and a more balanced combination. Let's see here two companies that do use this. So let's take a look at this color wheel here. I put the square here and you can see that the four edges of the square end up in different colors. So here we have the color red, okay, is in one edge here. We have the color yellow orange on the other. We have the color blue violet here, okay, on the other. And in the other one, we have the color green. And these four colors are used by two different companies. They're very famous that I'm going to give you as examples. Can you guess which, which are those companies? One of them is super famous and you probably see their logo every day. And it's called Google. So yes, take a look at the Google website and tell me which colors you see. We have red, we have yellow orange, we have green, and we have blue violet. So green here and the blue violet here. So these are the colors that appear on the Google uh, logo. We also have exactly the same colors on the eBay logo that also uses this tetradic square form format. So if you take a look on the eBay colors of all the letters, again, we are going to see the red, see, in one part or one corner of the square. On the other corner of the square, we have yellow orange. On the other one, we have the blue violet. And on the other edge here, okay, making a square, we are going to have the green one. Another company that also uses this tetradic format on the uh, color wheel is Toys R Us. Let's take a look on their logo. So if you take a look on their logo, which colors can we see there? We have the yellow green, we have the blue, okay, on one side. On the other corner, we have orange here, and also, what, red violet. These are the four colors that appear on the Toys R Us logo. Red, violet, orange, yellow, green, and blue. Now I'm going to show you another example, now using the tetradic colors in a rectangle format instead of a square. 
So here we have the color wheel again with a rectangle here. And if we look on the four corners of the rectangle, we're gonna see the colors red, blue, green, and orange. And these four colors are the colors that you can see on the Microsoft website. Yeah, the Microsoft logo has blue, red, green, and orange. So if you stayed with me until the end of this video, Thank you so much, I really appreciate you and I would like to ask you that if you enjoyed this video and if you got any information that was somehow useful for you, please give me a like on this video, subscribe to the channels because I'm planning to record more videos in the future. So have a nice day and it was great to, to have you here with me. Bye bye!